Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program. And we are going to talk about Argentina because who isn't talking about Argentina in the wine world right now? Malbec is Pinot Noir 2.0. People are running at it like it's the Jonas Brothers and ripping their clothes off. I mean, Malbec is ripping hot. Sales across the board our store, the country, search terms on Google. This is a varietal that everybody's talking about. We've got two. We've also got a Pinot Noir from a producer by the name of Luigi Bosca, who's a very big producer in Argentina. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about Argentinian wines. I think it's a really interesting part of the world that continues to get respect. The, you know, the high levels uh, for the vineyards, you know, 800, 900 meters above sea level. These are things that definitely uh, uh, create a scenario where wines can be produced at, you know, that are gonna have more extraction, more complexity, great terroir. The country in general is positioned to become a bigger and bigger player in the world. The price points are very attractive, the quality is high, the press has been gushing over them. And so it's really been a perfect storm in the last five years for Argentina. You've had enormous influence of talent, people coming from all over the world making wine there now, the Paul Hobbs of the world, great winemakers from Australia, yes, but more or less from France. We've seen a lot of the big Bordeaux uh, players establish up shop in this part of the world. The quality of the food there is interesting. And so in general, it's become a destination uh, for the world for you know Epicurious delights, food, and wine, and so I decided to bring the greatest tag team champions of all time to join me today to drink these wines. I'm excited about them. Uh, Katina Alta is one of the legendary uh, wines in the area, and so let's get into the first wine, which is Luigi Bosca 2007 Pinot Noir Reserva, 90 point Stephen Tanzer, which is a very big score from Stephen for 15 bucks. This is 780 meters um, altitude in Mendoza uh, on the foothills of the Andes Mountain, eight months in oak, uh, and the big ass glasses here. And that's exciting always. Uh, 15 bucks, 90 points Tanzer. Anybody who's uh, been following wine seriously for a long time knows how big of a score that is from Stephen Tanzer for this Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir becoming such a hot varietal. So you've got hot on hot with Argentina and Pinot Noir. Really dark in comparison. It's the kind of Pinot that sometimes gets me nervous and makes me question if they're pouring a different varietal in it because it's so dark. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Yeah. A little bit of earthiness, which is great. Uh, I get a little bit of a graphite kind of uh, component coming through on the nose. Clearly some cherries busting through. A little bit of sour cherry. A little grainy and earthy. A little bit of that dust coming through, cellar dust that I like. Good nose. Good classic Pinot nose. A little um, tight for a Pinot Noir nose. Not some of the uh, bacon fat that I love so much or some of the other floral components that I get often, but a, a solid effort on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Nikolai taking the fall. Chic was always a stronger one. Um, Really good, firm tannins. A little, little big. I mean, I, I would say that if I was tasting this wine, I would not believe that this was 100% Pinot. It's got a little bit more oomph. You know, you know, I'm not, you know, Sherlock Holmes or Columbo, you know, but I would say that this almost feels like there's Syrah-like characteristics in this wine. It's a big Pinot. Uh, it's got a little bit of a mintiness on the back end, which is intriguing, almost Cabernet-like. There clearly is some really firm, bright tannins on the back end, which do appeal to me. But this wine doesn't appeal to me overall. You know, it feels like it's half pregnant. It feels like it's half Pinot Noir, half Shiraz. And that acts a little weird for my palate. And I'm a little bit disturbed. Let me give it one more shot. It would be unfair for me to say that it it does have a delicious factor. It does taste good. And and so that, at the end of the day, I guess, you know, there's no reason to be romanced if there's a blending going on in here. Uh, there's a little bit of chocolate coming on the back end now. Very, almost like milk chocolate, like Hershey's. Like Hershey's bars were, were stuck into the uh, fermenters. Um, 
This court is wine 87 points. I think it's solid. I guess it's Pinot Noir like, but it's definitely not varietally, you know, accurate all the way. And it's a little bit disjointed and just awkward. Um, you, you've heard me talk about the 16 year old with the big feet and just skinny, like a basketball player that's 6'10", that, but a sophomore. You know, it's gonna be great in college and play in, in Division One basketball, but right now it's a little weird because it's so thin. It hasn't put on the muscle yet. Gotta hit the weight room, buddy. Gotta hit the weight room. And so, just disjointed, awkward. Let's go 87 minus, take that SS Chris, and let's move on. Move on. La Madrid Reserva. Cool package. La Madrid uh, Reserva 2006 Malbec. Cool package. I'm like a little mesmerized. 900 meters above sea level for this one. Uh, Hector Durguti is, uh, is the uh, winemaker. Durguti, Durguti, excuse me. Uh, $9.40, 80 Eight points, J. Miller. It's nine dollars and forty cents right now because we're in the middle of our twenty-sixth anniversary sale. Um, and eighty-eight points, J. Miller. Just rinse it, actually. So now we're getting into the Malbec, the varietal that definitely is causing the most buzz for these wines. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Oh wow, very floral fake. I mean, just I, I feel like I'm smelling fake flowers, and since they don't give off a scent. Uh, you can imagine what I'm thinking here. Um, clearly floral to an intensity that's almost weird. Too over the top and really has like this, like, ah, gosh, what is that smell? It's really, it's really like Febreze. It's, it's very chemical. The nose is very chemically uh, made. Every time I smell this, I just think of fake wine. It's going to be sugar-fied fruit. I can just feel it. I didn't even need to taste this wine. This tastes like the cuddle color purple. This tastes like a um, purple magic marker. This tastes like paint. It's very fake to me. This is exactly the style of wine that bothers me. I feel like it's Frankenstein instead of a human being. It's cloning. It's just fake. Uh, I don't like it. This is the wine that pisses me off. It's so genetically mustard. This is a wine room instead of vineyard made wine. Uh, just. I, I, this style bothers me quite a bit, and a lot of people like it, but it's kind of just fake. It just doesn't taste like wine to me. It really doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna score wine 77 points, and the reason, you know, I don't know why I'm giving it, maybe Chris Jenkins paying tribute to the best jet out for the year. I just don't like it. It, it tastes fake. You guys know what I mean, right? Sugarfied, uh, has no soul. Uh, you know, fake boobs and makeup. Just nothing there. You look into the eyes, and Rihanna just gave the uh, interview to Diane Sawyer last night. I watched it with Lizzie. You know, she said she looked in Chris Brown's eyes, and there wasn't anybody there. That's what I feel about this wine. I taste it, and I feel like there's nothing there. I feel like it's been genetically composed. Like, it was written out. I feel like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. That, I mean, just, why not let the vineyard speak? This wine doesn't. It's just not good. I'm going 71 points. Let's move on. A little rinsey rinse. I'm being quiet because I'm mad. I just don't want that wine made anymore. I'm going 61 points on that last wine. Katina Alta, 2006 um, from uh, Katina Zapata, one of the great producers in all of Argentina. Uh, 40 US dollars, 93 points, Jay Miller. I'm gonna read you what it says in the back of this bottle because I think it's interesting. It says, um, Catina Alta Malbec is sourced from small, highly selected estate-grown vineyards. Angelica Vineyard at 2,800 uh, elevation, 10%. La Permide Vineyard, 3,100 uh, elevation, 6%. Nakisa, uh, Nakasi, uh, excuse me, Vineyard at 3,800 elevation, 30%. Uh, Adriana Vineyard at 4,725 elevation. Uh, elevation 54%. At different altitudes, our Malbec vineyards express distinctive profiles of aromas and flavors. These vineyards are high. We've heard 800, 900. 
These are up the mountain. These are way up there. The vineyards tend to stress more to get the fruit. They work harder. It's immigrant mentality. And what happens when you get immigrant mentality? You win. So dark fruit, sniffy sniff. Just a totally, smell this month, this is interesting. You know, black pepper. Ma, can you give me back that one? I think this wine's corked. Let me just taste it real quick. Corked. Wow. Um, this wine's slightly corked. Let's just go into corked wine if we can. When you start taste, smelling like um, um, wet cardboard, Ma, show them all the cardboard we've got out here. Like, you know, when that stuff right here, there's some cardboard. When you start getting, you know, if you, you know, one of the great things you can do for yourself if you're a wine drinker, it's disappointing, uh, is get a, <coughs> excuse me, cardboard and wet it and eat it <laughs> and smell it. You, you get this kind of wet paper. It, it's bacteria like, it, it's wet paper. You can just smell it. I caught it at the tail end. Just as I was going away, it's a, it's a little corked, uh, slightly, but it's there, um, and I taste it, and you kind of just the muted flavors. You don't taste as much of the fruit. It really does taste like you're you're tasting a little bit of like wet paper, and that's quite disappointing. And that kind of ends the show. Wow, that was a very, that was a bad show. I was mad at the Pinot, right? No, the wine. I felt like I was kind of not Pinot. Then I was pissed at wine number two. Mm -hmm. Wine number three is corked. And so for all the build-up, Argentina, don't cry for me, Argentina. You know, nothing for nothing. I think I'm gonna shed a tear for Argentina. This is a one difficult show. Maybe I should cancel my trip in March, Ma, because they might not have me in because you know what? Argentina went today. Bad show, bad. And, uh, and that's just the way it ends. Question of the day. What's your favorite Madonna song? You, with a little bit of me, that was a lot of me, a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world. Weird.